Welcome back. So today's career video and closing out the ones that will post in Vegas when I'm not actually here. I'm going to close out with Jimmy Carson. I'm going to close out because I just did the Peter Klima video and I was like, hey, part of that big trade was Jimmy Carson. And that's a fascinating career that I'm sure there are people who don't know who Jimmy Carson is that they'll see his name in record books here and there and getting mentioned for what he did at a young age and thinking, what happened to him? So it's an interesting case, uh, number two pick in 1986. So it's not like when the Kings picked him, he was a late pick or came out of nowhere. He was seen as a dynamic young talent, and he was. Uh, his first year, 86-87, uh, he scores 37 goals, 42 assists for 79 points in 80 games. Now this is the 80s, and there's a lot of points being scored, but still, point per game in your rookie season, pretty good. Uh, in the playoffs, five games played, one goal, two assists, three points. So the Kings have themselves a very talented uh, forward in Jimmy Carson. He finished third in Calder voting. His 18 power play goals was fifth in the NHL. Excellent on the power play. 87-88, uh, did he have a sophomore slump? Absolutely not. So, uh, 80 games played, 55 goals, which was third in the NHL, 52 assists, 107 points, which is eighth. He's still a teenager. He's drafted 86, and by 88, he's already got 186 points. He could have just absolutely cashed in coming out of his entry-level contract with the way contracts are now. Uh, so five games played in the playoffs, five goals, three assists, eight points. He was fifth in Lady Bing voting, so gentlemanly player as well. Uh, 22 power play goals, that's third overall in the NHL. So 40 power play goals for his first two years in the NHL. He's still a teenager. Uh, August 9th, he's traded to the Oilers as part of the massive Gretzky deal. Which I didn't really have room here, but I think I've gone over the Gretzky deal a lot. Jimmy Carson is really the star forward going to the Oilers. The idea that, okay, you've lost Gretzky, but you've got Carson. He's also a center, and he's young, and, and he'll score points. And he does. 88-89, he lights it up with the Oilers. 80 games played, 49 goals, so he falls just short of 50. Uh, but he's 7th in the league with 49 goals, 51 assists, 100 points, which is ninth overall. So for an Oilers team that's looking to cushion the blow of losing Gretzky, uh, having Carson, Jelena, some of the other pieces they got from LA, it definitely helps. Uh, in the playoffs, though, seven games, two goals, one assist, three points. He plays in the only All-Star game he played in his career. Uh, he's fourth in Lady Bing voting. He has 19 power play goals, which is seventh in the NHL. <clears throat> so things are going well. The following season, very short period of time spent in Edmonton. Four games, one goal, two assists, three points. Uh, he demands a trade. The Oilers say fine, they trade him. So November 2nd, he is traded to the Detroit Red Wings with a 1991 fifth round pick and Kevin McClelland in exchange for Adam Graves, Joe Murphy, uh, Peter Klima, and Jeff Sharples. So, yeah, uh, that's definitely a trade that favored the Oilers. And it, it it's one of those things, too, where you've got Carson going home. He's going to the, the team he grew up watching, he, you know, his hometown, Detroit, and all that. But it had to sting a little bit uh, on two levels. First off, uh, the Oilers go off and win the 1990 Stanley Cup, so he just misses out there. Plays 44 games in Detroit after the trade, 20 goals, 16 assists, 36 points. He would never reach a point per game again. He's in his early 20s. This is when a player should be, you know, remarkable and, and putting up fantastic totals, and it just it just drops off. And I, I don't have a magical reason for that either. Uh, 90 91, 64 games played, 21 goals, 25 assists, 46 points. I forget to turn off the air conditioner. Okay, 46 points in the playoffs. He adds two goals and an assist for three points in seven games. Now, he does kind of get his game back in 91 92. Still not point per game, but 80 games played with the Wings, 34 goals, 35 assists, 69 points. In the playoffs, he adds two goals and three assists, five points in 11 games. So 92-93, 52 games, 25 goals, 26 assists, 51 points. Hey, he's back to about a point per game. And the Wings trade him. January 29th, he's traded with Mark per Mark Potvin, uh, Gary Suchuk, in exchange for Paul Coffey, Sylvain Couturier. I had to write the whole thing out because otherwise I would have said Sean Couturier, and Jim Heller. So he goes back to L.A. He's going to play with Gretzky. So this should be great, right? I mean, he can play on the wing if he wants to. Uh, and so it, it doesn't work. He goes from point per game in, in Detroit, at least very close, one point less than game played in Detroit, to 34 games with L.A., 12 goals, 10 assists, 22 points. The offense has just dropped right off. 
Uh, in the playoffs, 18 games, five goals, four assists, nine points. So his totals in the playoffs are okay, right? That's fine. Five goals in 18 games. Uh, that was the year, of course, that the Kings go all the way to the Stanley Cup final. So he got close. 93-94, 25 games played for the LA Kings. Four goals, seven assists, 11 points. And then on January 8th, they show they're not scared of Jimmy Carson coming back to haunt him. They trade him to a division rival, the Vancouver Canucks, in exchange for Dixon Ward going the other way. Dixon Ward, a player I remember well from Vancouver. There's no way you could have offered Dixon Ward straight up for Jimmy Carson at this level. At this level, you can. Uh, in Vancouver, it just doesn't get better. 34 games, 7 goals, 10 assists, 17 points. He only played the two playoff games for the Canucks that year and recorded one assist. Remember, that's 94. That's the year the Canucks go all the way to the final. And Jimmy Carson is, well, he's behind guys like Craven, and he's not going to put out Lafayette, who's a good fourth-line center. So he ends up signing July 15th of 1994 with the Hartford Whalers. Uh, as an unrestricted free agent. And the free fall doesn't really stop here. In 38 games, 9 goals, 10 assists, 19 points. 95-96, uh, plays 11 games for the Whalers, 1 goal. And that's all there is to write about with him, is that just the 1 goal there. Now, he was the second teenager in NHL history to score 50 goals. Gretzky was first. So when a teenager hits 50 goals, and you're looking, you go, who? This is who? Uh, 1997, though, he did win the Turner Cup with the Detroit Vipers. So after he was done in the National Hockey League, he did play in the International Hockey League for the Detroit Vipers. Played some good hockey there. Uh, 92-93, so this season here between Detroit and L.A., he ends up playing 86 games that year. It was an 84-game schedule. He plays two extra games because of the way scheduling was between the Wings and the uh, L.A. Kings. So that sets a record. But a year later, Bob Kadelski would equal it. I believe that was between Ottawa and Florida. That Kadelski did that. And so that record's been matched. Nobody, I don't think anybody will get 86 games again. I don't think there'll be enough games in hand when a, tr when a trade is made for that to happen. But we'll see. Uh, his 100th goal in his NHL career was scored at 20 years old and 116 days. Gretzky's the only one to do it at a younger stage. He did it at 20 years old and 40 days. So, you know, Carson had quite the career early. I think he really raised the bar. Uh, you, you ask yourself a lot of questions, like what if he stays in Edmonton? What if he says, you know what, I'm happy in Edmonton, I'm fine with staying here? What if Detroit doesn't trade him in 92-93? Does he maintain that point per game pace? Uh, a lot of questions with Jimmy Carson. In the end, he plays 626 games in the, the regular season, 275 goals. 286 assists for 561 points. And he adds to that 55 games played, 17 goals, 15 assists, 32 points in the playoffs. So sadly, he doesn't play much for the Canucks in the 94 run to the final. Part of the LA run to the final in 93. Misses out on the Stanley Cup fun uh, for Detroit that would show up in 1997, the same year that they win the Turner Cup in the IHL. And he misses out on the 90 Stanley Cup for the Oilers because he's part of the trade that brings the 1990 Stanley Cup to the Edmonton Oilers. So it's an interesting career because, again, uh, you just look at those first three years. And what we know now is that players cash in after those first three years. Carson would have been a very, very rich man, uh, either via an eight-year contract that he would have signed uh, somehow, some way. And if it wasn't with the Oilers, they would have traded his rights and probably got back a King's Ransom for him. Uh, and then does he get bought out? Probably, yeah. But anyways, there you go. Uh, the career of Jimmy Carson, again, I think it's an interesting one. I went with an L.A. jersey. I know he didn't play long in L.A., played more games for Detroit than he did for L.A., but his biggest years were in L.A. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.